Hello everybody and welcome to not a huge spaceship but a small little rover. Yeah, I decided to build a little space buggy that uh, also has some rocket engines. <laughs> yeah, this thing is called the Duna buggy and uh, yeah, it has a roll cage. Yay, um, no way of getting back on its four wheels. Well, you can see the reinforced floor over there, and the cabin lights, and four seats, and now we're going to get this to Duna. With a huge spaceship! It wouldn't be a Shadow Zone video if there was not a humongous spaceship involved. And as the title suggested, this is just a tiny thing, the rover weighs just about three tons, and I make a big fuss about it to get it on the surface of Duna. Yeah, we're going to look inside the spaceship now. You may have noticed that the spaceship is upside down. That's because I realized if you have really, really, really big vehicles that you want to send to space, it's a lot easier and more stable to build sort of the boosters around it. And hope nothing explodes. Yep, oh, just the spent boosters exploding. No worries there. So you kind of pull the spaceship instead of pushing it, that reduces the wobbling and it makes the entire thing a lot more stable. Okay, now we got this in orbit. We can open up the radiators because it has a lot of nuclear engines and we can open up the solar panels. And yeah, this huge thing, the Duna Cruiser or whatever I have called it, I have forgotten to be honest. And I've forgotten to open the solar panel, ah, uh, radiator. But we get a Duna encounter very soon, just have to make some adjustments and yeah, I'm going to skip forward through a lot of things in this video because you've seen them so often and you don't have to watch the reruns. Okay. Trajectories mod here showing me some error breaking trajectory when I go into the atmosphere, which is what I am attempting right now. And we are already in the thick of it. Okay, this is getting hot, but I think we will manage. We will be diving in very deep, about 12 kilometers or something like that. And whoa! Okay, that was just one of the small circular intakes that I've used for just optical purposes, so they don't have any practical use at all. Okay, some adjustment burns, and we have a stable orbit around Duna. Okay, time to get the stuff down to the surface. And we need not only the rover, but some infrastructure. First, this little thing here. And this is basically a fuel station. So this is a resource tank, an ore tank, of course, a fuel tank and a refinery. This is going to be basically the thing that refuels the fuel tanks that are used for the booster rockets. And I'm using a small space tug, basically some monopropellant tanks with a docking port and a probe core inside. I'm using that to deorbit this thing. And then I'm going to get this thing back into a stable trajectory and then back onto the main ship. There you go, just a small little space tug. And we're heading down and it burns. Yeah, it burns a lot. And the thing is with Duna's atmosphere, well, since it is not that dense, you don't have that much of a braking effect. And then this happens. Yeah. Okay, of course, so then I had to try again. And I had to fire the thrusters way earlier. And then, yeah, I'm using Open Broadcaster for the videos at the moment. And yeah, it kind of froze during this recording. So you can hear the sound of the engines firing. And you can see an image of the parachute opening but 
yeah i'm very sorry that this is the only thing that you can see and yeah after i've separated the deceleration booster it kind of flies around i rename it and reclassify it as debris and then it's gone okay so this is basically the fuel station for the rover and the claw in front will be the thing where the rover will dock okay now we have the tug heading back home into the cargo bay there we go boom okay now that that's over with we're uh, going to deliver something else because a rover alone well, it would be a little bit boring and a little bit harsh to leave a Kerbal down there just with a rover, wouldn't it? So I decided to drop some habitation modules as well. So once again, using one of those tiny space tugs, getting them back into a stable orbit. And then this here has a science lab, this here has space for four Kerbals. Uh, besides the science lab, of course. And it also has some parachutes and some rockets, so we can descend safely. And this time around it worked like a charm on the first try, I might add. However, we are quite far away from the fuel station, about 10 kilometers, but yeah. In planetary dimensions, that not so far. Okay, so... Opening solar panels, reclassifying this as a base, and then I have to... Yep, there we go. I have to undock that uh, booster stage. Well, booster stage, descent stage, so to speak. And there we have our habitation. And then, of course, the tug has to get back home. Now, finally, finally, what I have announced in the beginning of the video, we're going to deliver a rover and we're going to deliver it in style. No, 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 not just some parachutes or fairings or anything. No, we're going to use a dropship. And this is it. This is the Dunya Buggy Dropship. Yeah, I was a little bit uncreative with names for this video, but yeah, whatever. And this thing is designed to deliver the rover to Duna, deliver four Kerbals to Duna, and then get back up to the mothership. There we go, bye bye mothership. And yeah, uh, I remembered, uh, the mothership is called the Duna Dervish. Dervish because it's like whirling around between Kerbin and Duna. It is designed to make multiple trips. It has a lot of Delta V. And it also can be, of course, whoa, some parachute mishap. Okay, no worries. Just have to fire the thrusters. Slow down, slow down. Okay, okay, this looks good. Okay, we're stable and touchdown. Yes. The buggy has landed, or rather the dropship has landed, and there you go, the Duna buggy is already inside, and those Kerbals can get directly on board from inside the cargo bay, there we go, and then the hatch was obstructed, so I had to drop the buggy before I could add some more Kerbals, boom, there you go, hit your head a little bit, ah, doesn't worry. Okay, another one, there you go, all Kerbals aboard, and then it's time to Head back to the Duna Dervish. Oh, okay, now we lost uh, about three tons of weight. This thing is unstable! Whoa, okay, I really have to watch my throttle over here. If it goes about, well, higher than 1.5 thrust to weight ratio, then I'm in trouble. Yeah, but I managed to get an encounter with my mothership and set a uh, reminder for that and in the meantime we can take a ride that's what this thing is for and we have four kerbals traveling in style across the deserts of duna there we go first we have to make a stop at the fuel station because we're going to refuel after using those uh, nice little rockets okay this thing can travel 
somewhat safely uh, across the surface of Duna at about well 40 meters per second or something like that. And whoa, there you go. Yeah, reaction wheels for the win. And that jumping is really fun, if you land correctly, of course. Boom. Okay, that's looking good. But I'm going to spare you the entire travel, and let's just say it worked out fine. There we go, we are at our fuel station, and since we have, well, we didn't use a lot of fuel, but we can take the opportunity to top up those tanks that are placed uh, in the front instead of well, where an engine would be in a real car. So there we go, filling up the fuel. And then it's time to take a nap, so the crew has to get back to their, well, back, they haven't been there yet, but you see in the background the habitation module, and that's where we are going right now. And yeah, we are experiencing lag again, and that is because of, you might have guessed it, that open broadcaster thing again. I hope the new version that I've downloaded will remedy that, and yes, yeah, some flying occurring over here there we go I've skipped ahead a little bit through those 12 kilometers of driving and we're heading over to our habitation module okay just a final look from the back and then we're heading to the base so the Kerbals can rest after about, well, they've been in space for, I think, 250 days. So they're very happy to be out of the spaceship and they will be more than happy to be in a lot more comfortable habitation than they have been during those 250 days. And also with some gravity, of course. There we go, the sun setting over the rolling hills of Duna while the crew of the Duna Buggy has arrived. There we go, let's head out there. Huh, what are you doing on the roof? Okay. So that's the hatch where you enter and then you get distributed to either the science lab or one of those uh, crew canisters and yeah. Now that all the crew is aboard, let's have a look outside. There's our car, our nice little Duna buggy, and the sun is setting. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, a look on the other side. If that windows were transparent from the outside, then we could look actually inside the other compartment. I think there is a mod that enables that, but I haven't tried yet. Okay, meanwhile, back in space. It is time to dock the dropship with the dervish, the mothership. And we're heading in quite okay. For those of you who are interested, I really built uh, the rover first, then I built the dropship around the rover, and then I built the cruiser around the dropship. Yeah, that's how it happened. And then I decided, okay, I have some space left for some other equipment, so I added some cargo bays, and yeah, the rest is history. Planning for my transfer window. Okay, there's some in a few hundred days, that's a bit far, but I'm, I think I can get a closer one. And I did, and I'm firing my mighty nuclear engines right now to get back to Kerbin. Let's hope we don't scrape the surface, but we don't, and we get back to Kerbin right now. Let's see about that periaps. Looking good. Maybe we can get an air break over there. But the problem is we're heading in very fast, and we don't have any heat shields, and this is a big, big, big sequence of booms. Yeah. Okay, no survivors, that's bad. So I decided to do it the old-fashioned and boring way, meaning doing a long, long burn for circulation. There we go, and we're firing the nuclear engines. We still have loads of Delta V left, that's way enough to manage, but it's a lot more boring than a nice little air brake, but 
What can you do if the ship explodes? You have to do it this way. Okay, okay, that's looking good. We're already captured around Kerbin, so we're safe for now. And we're reducing our air pipes even further, and then we're reducing it even more, and then we're... Well, we're finished now. Okay, back on Dunal. It's time to take that thing once again for a spin. Let's enjoy the maneuverability and the speed that this buggy provides on Duna. Why not increase it by heading downwards? Well, no risk, no fun now. Yeah. Marvelous. This is off-roading at its best. Interplanetary off-roading. And yes, that was good. That was really good. Okay, time to hit the brake. Okay, not so good. Hmm. Well, I think we need a new rover. Joffrey Kerman still alive and trying to signal an SOS. But nobody listening, so yeah. Then I thought, well, this is not finished yet, then I thought, why not deliver everything in one package? So this is basically a habitation module, this is basically a refinery, there is an ISRU in there, there are drills in there, and there is also a garage for the rover. So this thing could fit in a regular fairing and could be delivered by a regular rocket to Duna. And it looks a little bit like a whale, but yeah. Okay, there we go. Let's open it up. Inside that, also some communications device. Inside there we have the rover, or the buggy. Then we have our command deck and communications deck. Then we have a gangway, of course, secured with some struts. Then this is the energy hub. We have batteries and, of course, some fuel cells and solar panels in there. Then we have our science lab. And if you go around, you can enter the garage and head out with your rover. And have some fun, of course. And once you've finished with that, you can head back in and dock with the claw that I've mounted there and refuel your fuel tanks. Well, thanks for watching, goodbye.